Hi, Wycliffe Barrett, x -Flame Dedicated. Today I'm going to do a review of the new SSG 747-8i Intercontinental Aircraft. See you right after the intro. Uh, 2000 feet. I've got the SSG 747 on the computer here. Uh, this is a uh, version update to the aircraft. Um, as we stated, well, it seems like a long time ago, this is a huge aircraft, absolutely massive. It is so long, it's unbelievable. SSG have done an update and uh, it's almost like a complete rewrite. Uh, they've remodeled it so the, the outside texturing and the outside model has been redone. The cockpit has been redone and uh, they asked me if I would do a review for them and I said I would. Um, there are a couple of things that are very much the same as was in the previous version. There are some things that have been updated. It's a very, very slick aircraft, um, but we're going to look at the cockpit in the main. I will do a uh, cold and dark start and a takeoff uh, and just have a, a look around the exterior modeling of the aircraft, okay? We'll get right into it now and uh, we'll have a look. Supercritical Simulations Group uh, 7478i is a huge aircraft. I parked it over Stand Seven at uh, Stand Six, sorry, at Cardiff Airport. This is where the Iron Maiden uh, Air Force One aircraft was parked last year, and we'll just have a quick look around the aircraft. As you can see, it's very, very long indeed. There's an awful lot of passengers can get onto this intercontinental aircraft. It's uh, been totally reworked and uh, it's been remodeled and as you can see the exterior modeling is very very good they've also redone the cockpit inside as well as many other systems and i will go through them in in great detail but just having a look around the cockpit now using uh, x camera you can see that it is highly detailed and as usual it's the standard boeing brown it has been uh, redone it's been retextured and remodeled it is an absolutely incredible aircraft this although that said that some of the systems within the aircraft have uh, been dumbed down slightly when i say dumbed down just made a little bit easier so some switches you press one switch and four will come on um it's uh, it's a way of doing things that uh, makes complicated aircraft less complicated but even with that said it's still a very very good aircraft i am going to go through all of the systems uh, in a moment and, and tell you exactly what has been ha what has happened in this upgrade ssg have given this free to existing customers so if you're an existing customer you get it free uh, i will put the price up i believe the price is 39 dollars 95 cents i will have to check that and i'll put the price up right now uh, i will tell you there is no cabin even though you can uh, go between the seats here and try to open the cabin door you can't open the cabin door you can go through it but there's nothing there uh, so they've concentrated all their efforts in the cockpit here and as you can see the overhead is quite complicated as i just go through uh, a, a startup here a cold and dark startup now uh, i will tell you that i don't do everything as uh, procedurally correct i know that but i will tell you that uh, in the 7478i the flow for the overhead is starting on the left hand side going down and then moving into the middle panel and going from the top to the bottom and then the far right panel top to bottom and it's a case of going through and making sure all of the switches are in the correct position sometimes you will turn them on and the orange lights underneath because they're dual lit will stay on that's fine uh, it will go off as you start it up and you put the batteries on etc and you align the INR, the IRS um, it does look slightly complicated and as you can see I've started wrong anyway so I, I should have started with those switches to right at the top there that I'm doing now and then work my way down it's just one of those things I've forgotten about now one problem I have with this aircraft and I don't understand what's going on is that whilst I've got sounds in the cockpit and you can hear me clicking switches at least I hope you can one thing I haven't been able to figure out in, and that is the engine sounds on one occasion the engine sounds were working and then on another occasion they weren't and I've been into the configurator which is the electronic flight to uh, assistant on the left hand side of the cockpit and I've adjusted the volumes there but for some reason uh, I just can't get the engine sounds on so um, I'll have to figure that one out as I say it is a 
free upgrade from version 1.4 to 1.5 so you know that is really useful um just carrying on with this flow now to get the engines up and running um it's very different from a lot of other aircraft uh, in terms of how you start the engines uh, I suppose I'm saying it's different, but basically you've got to get power onto the aircraft, so it's turning the APU on, turning the batteries on, making sure the APU is running, and then starting the engine. So it's the same as almost any other aircraft, but of course you've got a multitude of switches here, as you can see, uh, as we go through them. Let me uh, tell you about some of the features then, because uh, I have got the change log here. So modeling and textures, cockpit textures completely redone, including baking. Uh, some model changes in cockpit to make it more accurate, so they've altered some things. They have eliminated the crawling ants. They were still visible on some systems. Now the crawling ants, um, it was a um, it was a graphic um, conflict, and we've seen it in the past in other aircraft. But it was also on the SSG, mostly on the exterior above one of the doors, I noticed it. But uh, they've eliminated the crawling ants uh, that was visible on some systems. Uh, they've improved the external model, notably the fu fuselage hump and the joint area. They've been uh, smoothed out between the fuselage and horizontal stabilizer, also with some added baking around there. Uh, the added tail stand stanchion which is on the freighter only has been added, so preventing uh, tail strikes. Moving on to the systems then, cockpit actuators and manipulators have now been redone so that the mouse wheel can be used to change values, something I hadn't noticed myself because I hadn't used the mouse wheel. So uh, yes, you can change the values with the mouse wheel, which is also very good. Also made certain cockpit switches adjustable that did not work previously to allow for cockpit flows and procedures such as the IRS switches. Yes, I had noticed that. Previously, the IRS switches did not move, even though you could turn them on, so to speak, just by clicking in there but now they do move camera view inside the cockpit now allows for freer movement also fixed issue with brakes and auto brake uh, they fixed the issue of speed brakes retracting automatically after landing and they've added the standby battery function so a huge array of new features have been placed into into the cockpit moving on there's even more yet engine start time has been made more realistic now i would challenge that i think the engine start time is a little bit too quick uh, to be quite honest because uh, as soon as you uh, as soon as the n2 reaches 50 percent and you hit the fuel flow the engines are started almost immediately and it doesn't take long to get to 50 percent on the n2 rotation so i think that actually might be a little bit too fast but they say they've made it more realistic Autopilot bank limited to 25 degrees in all regimes. Improved VNAV performance, including climb behavior for smoother climb out. Uh, improved throttle transitions between autopilot modes and the flight director bars are now limited to eight degrees nose up on takeoff. So huge amount of system changes there. As you can see me just quickly going through my flight plan here, just uh, as we go uh, on a quick flight. To Manchester. I'm actually not going to do the full flight, really. Just going to do the takeoff. But you know, you can see me inputting the data into the FMC. I'm going to keep quiet for a few moments. We'll have some music, and then we'll come back talking about the FMC and displays and what they've done with that. <laughs>
Okay, so we've got the engine started. I think I may have made this engine uh, startup sequence look a little bit longer than necessary, but I was going over a few things and rechecking. Uh, there is a pushback truck with the 7478i, and it's in the electronic flight assistant, which is in the left hand side there by the pilot. And uh, it's a very nice little uh, pushback truck. It's controlled by using your throttle and your rudder pedals, or if you haven't got rudder pedals but you've got a twist throttle then you can uh, manipulate the pushback truck using that as well. So a very nice detail there on uh, on the aircraft. Oops, unfortunately my fuel truck is uh, going to drive underneath the 747. It's supposed to stop when there's something in the way but um, the ground, ground vehicles don't always stop. Uh, not forgetting, this is X-Plane 10 that I'm in, not X-Plane 11, although I suspect the aircraft will work in X-Plane 11. I'll have to check that out. I haven't transferred it over as yet. X-Plane 11 is still a beta, so it's not worth uh, the hassle, so to speak. Anyway, uh, we're taxiing down to runway 30, uh, ready for this departure. And I'm only going to do the departure, just so you can see the aircraft in the air. I'm not flying all the way to... Um, Manchester. Um, as you can see it, it looks good on the ground, it really moves quite well. You've got to be a bit careful because these are massive engines, absolutely huge engines and hugely overpowered so you've got to be very careful otherwise you end up uh, you know shooting along the taxiway uh, Approaching before you know it. Three, zero. That's the uh, XRAS system telling me that I'm uh, approaching 30, and soon it'll tell me that I'm on 30. It's a clever little system. On runway 30. Okay, there we are on runway 30. Looking out of the cockpit windows, you can see the weather front there up ahead. Um, it's just changed. It went a little bit uh, duller uh, as I changed. Um, as I hung around for a few minutes anyway, just hanging about doing stuff. Anyway, here we go. Take off, runway 30 in the 7478i. Uh, get call out. Once again, those engine sounds have disappeared, and I'm not quite sure why that is. I will figure that out and let you know. Just uh, final uh, comments about the FMC displays. The fixed issue were some SIDS and STARS and runways were missing. Uh, now SIDS and STARS can be selected with or without transitions. Fixed and improved SID and star drawing on the navigation display. Uh, improved DGPWS and navigation display of terrain to be more like the one in the real aircraft. Improved, improved fuel consumption calculation. Fixed error in top of descent computations when selecting a star. Resolved issue of waypoints being superseded when entering them in the route page. Um, behavior of slip skid indicator on PFD has been improved and added some matte shine to display screens. Various internal changes to improve the FPS so most users should experience better performance. I think this is an incredible aircraft, uh, personally. Um, the price is just about right for what it is. It's a big aircraft. It's not a study level sim. It's not that deep in systems, but it's a very good simulator. It looks good, it flies well. Uh, this is Wycliffe Barrett, x -Plane Dedicated. I hope you've enjoyed this review, and uh, it's a free upgrade. So go and get it. I would. Uh, so it's a free upgrade to 1.5 of the 7478i. We'll see you all again in the new year. This is definitely the last video before Christmas and the uh, end of 2016. So you won't see another video from me until 2017. Hope you all have a wonderful holiday. Take care of each other. Peace and love to everybody. And uh, have a great time. We'll see you soon. Take care. Cheerio. Yeah.